operations and bowel movements and roadkill. For those of us at film school who kind of knew that an Academy Award was just not really in the cards and that filmmaking was sort of just a good way to stay out of jail, there was Lloyd Kaufman. When Hatchet opened on September 7th in 2007, I was so excited to pick up all the newspaper articles and read the reviews. And there were two statements, two statements that always went hand in hand. One was reminiscent of a trauma film, and the other was steaming pile of shit. Oh, this is great. I get to follow Lloyd's wife. And it's not the first time. Nice work, Lloyd. Half full audience. Okay. Listen, <laughs> it's really great to be here among these fine, talented, and creative directors. And Lloyd Kaufman. Let's face the facts. He's, <laughs> he's been on a search for the perfect, grotesque, hideous, and disgusting monster, and he finally found it in the mirror. Folks, look at this face. This is <laughs> There's a face, there's a face for, I should talk, there's a face for radio. Not even satellite. Listen, as a young fellow, Lloyd always dreamt of becoming a filmmaker. And when that didn't work out, he started trauma entertainment. Now, he I uh, must have absolute silence. <laughs> I was told the speech had to be two minutes. This man has not accomplished enough to keep me talking. <laughs> I tried to fill up some pages here. I had to use big type. <laughs> but now, let's be serious. <clears throat> This tribute to Lloyd Kaufman has been a long time coming, and with good reason. You see, up till now, people thought that Troma's productions were merely dumb, low-budget examples of tastelessness, featuring mindless scenes of sex and violence, but... But, as moviegoers became more sophisticated, audiences learned to look beneath the brainless buffoonery and recognize his films for the inspired works of art that they truly are. Already, already, where did he go? The Toxic Avenger has taken his rightful place in cinematic history alongside Citizen Kane and the Maltese Falcon. <laughs> Even as we speak, Poultry Geist is the subject of intense academic study in colleges and asylums throughout the world. <laughs> You'll be happy to know I'm almost finished. <laughs> and what of the man behind these intellectual masterworks? Can we ordinary mortals ever hope to understand the workings of a mind that can probe beneath beneath the human psyche with masterworks like Kabuki Man and Tromod and what the hell is it, Tromeo and Juliet. <laughs> now we come to the rousing finale. What is it, and we must all think carefully about this, what is it that separates this man, this legend, 
this unstoppable creative force from the rest of us. Surely it can't be his bad taste in clothes. <laughs> Not alone. Or his turn-off personality. The greatest directors have been trying to solve this riddle, hoping that they too might one day follow in the footsteps of this man whose achievements are the envy of the Spielbergs and Lucases among us. <laughs> I, I'm too choked up, I can say no more, but just as no words can adequately describe a sunrise or a woman's kiss. <laughs> <laughs> so too can no words adequately pay tribute to this man who has inspired so many by making them realize that it requires no talent to be a success. <laughs> Line. I, I prepared this last line all during the drive down here. This is the last line I've been working on. <laughs> Lloyd, yes. you're one in a million, and even that may be too many. It's, it's a shame that Stan has to leave. Uh, sorry, you have to go so soon, but we wa he wanted you to know that he wrote all those miserable jokes. You could tell that Jack Kirby and Steve Ditko had nothing to do with that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it when he tops me. <laughs> anyway, uh, not to worry, Stan. Uh, the good news is that Stan, you know, is 110 years old, and... Uh, but I'll die before him, and I want you all to know that if I get terminal cancer, I want to go the way Jack Kevorkian, uh, I want to go the Jack Kevorkian way. But I don't need the drugs. Just put in a copy of Spider-Man 3. And... <laughs> you to have another roast later so I can back it, get back at him. I didn't know that I'd be the roastee for two minutes here in front of him. Stanley.